Are we just going to stand around? I told him we're all waiting. Is he still in his jocks? Yes, bleach my eyes. But this is ridiculous, are you Oh, just give me a minute, I don't know him. I'm starting. Matt, you can't do that. It's not family, it's from a client. Ah, food supplements. I don't think you need supplements. Don't be mean. Did you see the bags of crisps she put away last night? She was like a machine. Oh, here, I'm freezing. Can we do this? Health stuff. Protein oil. Mm -hmm. Health food. Yeah, I'll put it with the recycling. It should be you. Go and get your father. At least you have your New Year's resolution sorted, eh? Why we? If I'm such a machine. It moves. Hey. Outside in the middle of winter. And the history of this family is bad ideas. Here, start with the red one. Don't be like that. It's only one day a year. That's something to be grateful for. <laughs> it's not shoes. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I've been a bad boy, yeah. Can like, we all have our laugh now? I need to go back to bed. Yeah, it feels like someone threw up in it. That's not it. Look, wait a second. <laughs> Today, he's a lucky guy then. Merry Christmas, mate. I hope you're hungry. Yeah, he does barbecues. Um, we all got him to come early to do your fry up. We're having a party instead of the usual. I'll do the turkey tomorrow. They all chipped in. Just give me ten minutes and I'll get your rashes sizzling. I heard you like them crisp. No, I don't bother, mate. I'm not hungry. Thanks for the call. Well done, Haley. You broke that. I'll have a word with him. Uh, don't worry about me. That blood just been tatted as a Roman sandal all over. <laughs> I don't know what language that is you're speaking, mate, but um, am I going to sit up or not? I don't waste meat. Trust me, it won't be wasted. OK. Hey. Oh, hello. I thought you were at your sister's. Oh, bloody work. I got an urgent call to being at the station. In fact, I'm there right now. <laughs> Two kids and they both got electric guitars. It was either this or I'd chop up the amps. <laughs> How did Jack make out? Ah, Lego. Tons of it. Uh, nice. Tell him I was asking for him, will you? I will. Is Bob around? Uh, I think he's out back. Do you want me to go get him? Nah, there's no need. I'm just dropping these in for the shelter, a few bits and bobs. The wine is for Bob. Hmm. I won't tell Renee. Don't be smart. All the business is due, apart from Paul Brennan. Obviously. Mm. Oh, and I'm sure Jerry Lynch will be around with a bottle of arsenic. <laughs> How's your guest? He's grand. He's hardly a master criminal now. Oh, trust me, there is no such thing. There are two types of criminal. Stupid and lucky, and stupid and not lucky. And Louis is stupid and not lucky. <laughs> well, I think that stupid men are underrated. There's something nice about having a big age around the place. Yeah, I suppose it's a change. Is it, though? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Enjoy your day. Yeah, you too. Oh, Carol, don't fall for it, OK? He's not a nice person. Don't worry. I'll frisk him for Lego. Mm. Nice <laughs> to see you. Yeah, I'd say you miss Dublin. Some bits more than others. Can I get some brandy butter? Why? Should we always have custard? It's not our house. Maybe order's a bit more sophisticated. Mm. Brandy butter is manky. All right, fair point. Get both. Right. Hi, Tommy. Hey, Doug. Come here, I'm, I'm glad I ran into you. Um, look, I can't do the, the Santy thing today. You can. Just go my big beard on and lose the accent. Doug, for Junior's sake. Oh, no, look, I'd love to. Just some walk I can't get out of. On Christmas Day? Yeah, it's, a, it's an emergency. How is it an emergency? Like, who is even driving on Christmas Day? It's a bus. Really? Yeah, yeah, a minibus for, for the old folks. They, they need a boy tomorrow. So do it tomorrow? Well, that's what I said, but they need a boy tonight and they got pretty ratty, so... But Doug can't make it. He has a minibus to repair. What's wrong with it? Well, I don't know you. What colour was it? Blue. So what does that matter? So you saw the bus, but you didn't check what was wrong with it? 
Yeah, but they tell me what colour it was. I don't know. <laughs> you are the worst liar. You are coming to dinner and you're wearing the gear. I can't spend a day with Orla, Tommy. I'm no good with secrets. I already told everybody Erica was pregnant. Is she? That's great news. Oh, I wish I could hug you. See what I mean? Leave me alone in that guy for 10 minutes and I'll tell Orla about Wayne. I can't help it. Tell her what? Dad. Tell Orla what? It's a film. First syllable. Sounds like... What's that, Jack? A hat. So, the first part of the first word sounds like hat. Bird? No, not bird. Does bird rhyme with hat in Jack world? <laughs> One more chance. Bat? Hero. Uh, <clears throat> second syllable. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what am I? Smelly. <laughs> Oh. It's a bit of fun. <laughs> Jack seems to think so. You know what I think? You chose the wrong Louis Gleason. <laughs> there is no right Louis Gleason. They're both aggravating, just in different ways. <laughs> yeah, sure they are. All right, listen, will you get Jack dressed? Because I don't want him indoors all day. Yep, yeah, I'll take him to the park if you like. Yeah. Give you a bit of space. You are a disgrace, Nora Kyo. <laughs> right, come on, Batman. We're going for a walk. <laughs> Spend a fortune on toys, and all he wants to do is play charades. <laughs> Santi's going to be ripping. Do you want to show more films? He completely missed the unbearable likeness of being. Well, he has a birthday coming up. Come here, um... Did you ever hear of Billy Meehan? Wasn't he the weird little gangster fella? Then someone played golf with his head. Four! <laughs> <laughs> they should name a, a, a club after him. Billy Meehan was my husband. It's a terrible tragedy when a uh, good man goes bad. He wasn't a good man. And I wasn't a good woman either. But I am trying to be now. But I am not a nun. That would have been a terrible waste. I understand things, you know, like Robin and that. I'm not a rat. You still think I robbed that shop? Office supplies? I'm saying I don't care. I just don't like being lied to. If you don't believe me, that's fine. I wouldn't believe me either, but uh, I'm telling you the truth. What do you want me to swear on, my children's life? You don't have any kids. Not yet. But look at the state I'm in. Tell me the truth and then we'll drop it. I promise you, I do not rob that shop. All right, well, what's going on with Bob? I know the two of you knew each other. We helped each other out once. It wasn't strictly legal. All right, go on. Mm, sorry, Carol. It's not my secret to tell. All right, well, then I won't ask you. So I'm staying tonight? Yeah, if you don't annoy me. Uh, what? I was just thinking, it's a great house to have such a lumpy sofa. Holy hell, am I giving off something today? Is that a no? That's a never. Never. Steve, come on. Right. Oh, hello. You give us a minute. I felt like a stroll anyway. I'm PC Plum, let me tell you what I've done. I pedal around this island more than once or twice. And if I call on you, we can make a cup of tea. I'll tell you all about the bees and birds. I was just about to crack open a selection box. You hungry? I don't miss Dublin. I miss you. Hey, what is it? What's wrong? Thank God he got you before you started cooking. Yeah, I, I forget to tell him you trick for the roast potatoes. I meant to stick a note in with the hamper, but I just forgot. Really? Right. 
When you're finished parboiling them, you pour off the water and give them a good hard shake in the saucepan. Otherwise, the oil just rolls straight off. Actually, I meant to ask you about the turkey. Oh, shoot. Yeah, should I microwave it in pieces or just grease the sides and hammer it in? You know you miss me. Of course I do. It's not going to be the same without you. No, same. Listen, I was thinking when you get back, maybe we'll do it all over again. You know, the tree, the works. I wish I knew when that'll be. Same. I really feel like I'm letting you down. Oh, would you stop? It's, it's not your fault. It never is, but just always seem to mess up. Okay, okay, right, stop, look. Just remember, happy faces. Yeah, happy faces. Well, I better get back to the physio. I've no birthday today, so I'm going to have to start shouting at myself. Okay, look, I'll, um, I'll call you later. Back at you. Tell me you don't miss me. Tell me it never crossed your mind, and I'll go. Of course I miss you. I miss a lot of things. I miss being 20, but I wouldn't go back if you paid me. We drove it into the wall the last time. Yeah, we did. Well, maybe we owe it to ourselves to get it right. You had your chance. You chose Hayley Collins. Briefly. And I chose Robbie. Don't talk another woman down, by the way. That doesn't impress me. I have never looked back on anything in my life and wanted to try again. This is the only one I come back to. You're like a stone on my shoe and I can't shake it. Look, Steve. I don't know what this is, but it's Christmas Day. And I have a son to take care of. And a big dinner to born. So give me a break, OK? He's nearly dressed. We might need some muscle to get his coat on. Maybe you could try. No, Steve just called in to say Happy Christmas, and he's not staying. <sighs> Many happy returns. Bye, Steve. What did he want? He's just checking up on me. He's worried about Louis. <laughs> I don't believe it. If it's that funny, I kept the receipt. I love it. Why am I getting two? Are you trying to make a show of me? Oh, I forgot to say, um, one of them is from Bob. Might want to stick it in the fridge. Don't tell me it's burger meat. You are kidding me. Artisan meat products from his favourite place, apparently. <laughs> it's a Stephen's Day emergency pack. Bob is an odd kind of man. He's coming to the barbecue later when Renee is Skype in Brazil. Give him a bottle of wine or something. If it happens. If? What's the problem? Da. You know, I had a go with him about Christmas and now he won't do anything. That's what you wanted. No, it isn't. It is. No, I wanted him to tone it down a bit. He won't even open his presents. What did you get him? Billy Barry took her eye off the ball that year. That's us. Ma made us learn it as a surprise from the Christmas she got in the big tape recorder. We sat on the stairs and performed on Christmas Eve. We even did the actions and everything. Adorable. We were broke. All right, we needed a present that didn't cost anything. So, look, can you help me or not? I'm the one who told him to start the lot he is. Have his own Christmas. It doesn't matter who told him, all right? He's miserable now. I think he's actually depressed. What else? What do you mean? I know you, Hayley. I can see you're off colour. It's dark. And open your presents. I was just thinking about Steve. All right. It's not exactly the Christmas I had planned for us. I thought we'd be spending the day together watching Elf, giving each other jumpers. And I drove him away. I'm sorry, but I thought it was the right thing for you. Yeah, look, it probably was. It just doesn't help when you're feeling lonely. 
Open it. If this is Dara singing Edelweiss, I'm taking it back to the shop. Ah, oh, Hayley. You shouldn't be spending your money on me. Well, how was he? Oh, to be honest, he was a bit down. Yeah, he's missing you. Well, it's not just that. He feels guilty. Yeah, of course he does. Oh, he's the head of the household. He feels like he's run out on the job. Why is Wayne the head of the household? Why, why not Norla? Oh! <laughs> just the way men think, darling, you know. Little masculine delusions, all right? You're certainly the expert there. Arla. Yeah? Will you make sure Junior stays upstairs? I just want to put that Sandy costume on. Yeah, sure. Nice one. Will you two keep it together? One of us is. She's no fool. She's going to know something's up. Tucker, her husband is a cheat and creep. Why do we all know and she doesn't? Because that's what we agreed, and today is not the day to discuss it. You agreed. You two. I am not part of your boys' club and I don't want to be. Tim Cahill. He's another good one. I don't like sport. What do you like then? I like meat. Bob Charles. Bobby Man. I work at the food trade as well, just across the road. Oh, uh, yeah, the hungry pig. That's the one. What kind of stuff do you serve there? Pulled pork, I suppose. Eh, not again. I take it you don't like pulled pork. Well, it's like the Christopher barbecue. <laughs> now, no one's offended, but no one's having a good time. <laughs> I think you're wrong about Christopher, but the reason you might like pulled pork is because you can't just slap it on the barbie. It does take time. You see, my pulled pork is so good that I once got a fan letter from a pig. And my coleslaw is so amazing that the cabbage just leaps up onto the blade. I got it. Here. How long do we have to use of this Barbie face for? Uh, 11 till 3 and then 4 till midnight. Huh. Well, you think it was a burger sound? Nothing fancy. Smoke break. But it's nearly 3. Is it? Huh. Oh, yeah, you're right. Huh. Hey, you have time for a quick one. Uh, we're done. Oh, hang on. That's, that's cheating. Yeah, right. No, it's fair dinkum, mate. <laughs> it's not fair dinkum. It's completely unfair dinkum. Listen to your brother. Seems nice. You have to get an Australian. I like him. See ya. See ya, Bob. This is a complete washout. Here, I was thinking of giving those Colgan girls a show. Who were the Colgan girls? Veronica, Teresa. The twins. Oh, the twins? Yeah, I never got there now. Yeah, they weren't big talkers, but I managed to get their numbers. Oh, yeah? What do you reckon? Go for it. Yeah? You two, family meeting. I'm oh, sorry, my wife. Something wrong. Your father's miserable in there. It's our fault. We have to fix it. How? I don't know. That's what family meetings are for. It's a nice dream while it lasted. Mm. Okay, there you go, love. Head of the table as always. Head of the table, on top of the world. It'd be great to be a man. Not now. Oh, oh, oh! oh hey, Santa! Let's get this show on the rock. Oh, oh. <laughs> nice one, Santi. Now, have you all got your belts? Really? Right, I'll take the first first. I'm on good timing because I'm recording this for all the nurses. Of course you are. A hain, a do, a hain do tree. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. All the best, John. I really hope that works out for you, man. What's with the tin whistle? Uh, people are using it as a wishing tree. You know, you put a little gift on it, you make a wish. He's a trad player. All he's wishing for is that the sessions get going again. What about you? Uh, I'm all out of wishes. Haley thinks she's wrecked everything. See, every year I make this big thing out of it. One year. I left the tree up till March. It was a stick with tinsel on it. I thought it was this big family thing, but it wasn't. It was bored of me. I could do without the whole thing. The turkey and the dry stuffing. There's a reason we only eat that crap once a year. They're doing a barbecue this year. Fair play to you, Anto. There's not many people with your guts. How do you mean? 
Look at the year everyone's having. Hayley's lost her boyfriend. Dara's still missing his girlfriend. Sharon's business closed for months. Add the apocalypse and it makes for fairly bleak stuff. But you zeroed in. You didn't get distracted and you found it. The crowning atrocity. The one year you dressed up as Santi and nobody laughed. I'm not faking being in a good mood. Why, is your real mood so precious? Will you come on? For Hayley. I'll have one burger. One. And I'm not dressing up. I might sing a bit. If I twist my arm. <laughs> I don't know what Hayley wished for. But it wasn't that. You need a hand? This is nice. Who's, uh, Liam? Stop snooping. I see. Jack's still asleep? Why, are you bored? No. You two seem to be getting on very well together. I know. It's spooky. How so? Someone liking you like that. And I used to. Well, well, well. What's all this then? Is it 1940 already? Uh, um, Carol, I seem to have left my umbrella behind. Uh, Mother gives me a chance to talk to you in my big sexy voice. <laughs> I am uh, PC Plum. Let me tell you what I've done. <laughs> I am more than you. What about you, Missy? I'd say you like a man with a bit of a brolly. <laughs> Mary, you check that turkey now. Earn your keep for once in your life. Didn't have you down as the tinsel type. Yeah, well, and a couple don't make it to Christmas. There's a lot you don't find out. Got your card? I hope it was OK. It's Christmas. People send cards. I'm sure you were shooting them off by the dozen. Dear X, season's greetings, every warm wish for the year ahead. Yours respectfully, etc., etc. Is that how it read? I didn't mean it to. Well, I'm just glad I know where we stand. You know, there's letter X's, Facebook X's, and then there's us, down at the very end, eh? Christmas card X's. Be sure to send you one next year if I can find your address. Just like old times, isn't it? You and me fighting, and Jerry looking on, loving it. That's her fault, is it? It was you, Steve. I know you think I used you. No. It's not that, like, you did, but it's not that. It's what you use me for. Work. You could have had us. We could have been together. But you chose your job. Pretty important job. Yeah, well, you have your priorities and I'm not one of them. I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. It wasn't true. Great. So glad we cleared that up. Now, is there anything else? Because it's not a great year for mistletoe. I'd like us to part on good terms. <laughs> you know, I like you, Steve, really, I do. I just don't respect you. And that's on you. You take care. I'll look out for your card. Jera. Anto. Are you all right? Now it feels like Christmas. <laughs> Come on, let's give this Barbie man a night to remember. Look, I'm begging with you. Just think about it tomorrow. Today, let everyone be happy. To say you did it to Mom, isn't it? As if it's the knowing that would hurt her and not the betrayal. OK, I'm a bad man. I'm a lousy husband. But take it out on me, not on Orla. Well, did you do your physio? Would you believe me if I said yes? Oh, Wayne. Come on, I tried, OK? It's like trying to tickle yourself. I need Bertha. Right, Sandy needs a drink. <laughs> Anyone? Look at you, 
stop tonight. Swear she'll be back tomorrow and she'll give you a proper going over. Yeah. Woman's like a tiger. I could barely sit her straight after the last session. Yeah, well, this time, I want pictures. We should go to the zoo tomorrow. Maybe. Do we go tomorrow? Or do they close for Christmas, Carol? Oh, I just said Christmas, Carol. <laughs> Look, we can go to the park anyway. I don't mind. You won't be too tired after having such a big Christmas carol. <laughs> it wasn't funny when I was five, Louie, and it's not funny now. We think it is, don't we, Jack? A small bit. Come on, commit yourself. I hate a lukewarm review. <laughs> well, what about you, Louie, now? That sounds a little bit like Lou, doesn't it? Were you born in a toilet? As it happens, I was. But I was named for my grandfather, Louis P. Crapper. <laughs> Are these presents? <laughs> there is nothing there. Nothing for your young eyes. Thank you. Show me. I'm hard to shock. I, I couldn't, uh, honestly. Honestly? Jack, take some of your stuff and bring it upstairs. No. Yeah, go on. What are you going to do with them? Jenga. Now, I don't care where you sleep. Pack your staplers, get your clothes, and go. If that's Umbrella Man, will you stall him? No, Louis. Hi. Your umbrella, is it? Uh, yeah. I've never held on to one for more than a week. You should, uh, tie them to your sleeves, like mittens. Thought we'd enjoy a nightcap. Yeah, look, maybe tomorrow. I'm kind of in the middle of something here, Steve. Yeah? Santa having a weird one this year. Louis, go on, just go. Yeah, I think I will. You're not going anywhere. Well, one of you is. And I mean that. Either he's walking out that door and he's not coming back, or you are. Do you know what? You can take your umbrella and your nightcap with you. Off with you. It won't be hard to find. Jack, I said, uh, whatever. You'll think of something. Are you really going to arrest a man over a bag of staplers? I've been suspended. I can't arrest anyone. Are you going to rat him out or what? He stole them. I don't have a choice. It's Christmas. Maybe give him a break. I don't pick who gets arrested. I just apply the law, that's all. And I'm not going to spin it just because you got charmed. What if I did it? Are you going to steal a bag of staples? I've done a lot worse. Not as long as I've known you. And what if I did do it? <sighs> you wouldn't. This is silly. Look, thanks for calling in, right? But I'm really not in the mood for visitors. What about tomorrow? As I said, I'm not in the mood. Oh, come on, Carol. It's a long life when you're lonely. I've had two big things in my life. Billy Meehan was the bad one. Robbie was the good one. There might be a third one day. Now, I like you a lot. But it won't be you. You told me you loved me once. I did. I have an awkward heart, Steve. I didn't choose it. But that's what it is. You can't change it. What do you think? Can 
Can I ask you? Ask me what? Who might the third one be? Okay, this is a really weird atmosphere and it's starting to bother me. You think this is weird? Right, I'm going to put Junior to bed and when I come back down, I'd like everything to go back to normal. <laughs> is that okay with you? It's your party. Great. Yeah, actually, no, it's not. I spent all day feeling sorry for you and now I don't know what to think. Why are letting them treat you like that? Conniving at it. Hurts us all. Okay, can somebody help me out here, Doug? Uh, look, we know about Bird, and we know you're in on it. In on what? Do I have to pull somebody's fingernails off? Can somebody tell me what's going on before there is bloodshed? Please, you're going to wake the child. Oh, now you care about him. Hey. Okay, I'm just going to let that one slide because I know he's too heavy your issues. Doug, what is going on? Look, we know about Wayne and that bird woman. Um, we know that you know, and we just don't think it's healthy, Orla. Healthy? That's exactly what it is, you gang of unbelievable Egypts. Berta is Wayne's physio. Maybe that's how it started. Oh, and she is married to Wayne's doctor, Martina. So I guess I can trust her. This is somehow your fault, isn't it? Partly. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to go to the kitchen and I'm going to make us all strong cups of coffee. And when I come back, it'll be Christmas again. <laughs> oh, poor Berta. Wayne, this is going to make your year. You absolute <laughs> clowns. David, that was low, yeah? I mean, Tommy might be Junior's father, but he's just as much Wayne's son as if he conceived him. I know, that was awful. I feel sick. Yeah, it's, it's all my fault. Everything you said is true, had a long time coming. Go and see if Arla's okay. I can't wait until she's old enough for Santa post in the letter, wondering what surprise she's going to get. I don't like surprises. I like to know what I'm getting. Tell us, Jer. What's the best Christmas present you ever got? Just being here tonight with the love of my sister and her beautiful family. I'm just going to go check Olivia. Oh, was the bit I worried you. It's not nice. No, I will tell you, though. You gave it to me. Pride and Prejudice, the book I'm in, in a little leather case. I think you were doing it at school and you loved it. Do you remember? I remember. You never read it. Oh, but you thought I would. That meant something. I can give you a hand with any leftovers, uh, burger buns, sauce you didn't use, a uh, bag of salad. Don't give him a carrot, whatever you do, he'll blow your brains out. On a Christmas day. Do you know what this barbecue means? Some twins. Now we have it. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll join your damn party. Only if you want it. I do love you, you know. Big baby. Did he call? Who? I don't know. Liam? Nobody calls. Oh, hey, you, uh... You never mentioned my jumper. I had a boyfriend once. He would have really appreciated that. A man of great taste.
You're not going already, are you? I only popped over to say hello to Sharon and Ansel. Don't come home hammered. You said you bring Jack to the park in the morning. I won't. <sighs> Again, Orla, I'm so sorry. Won't you stop? It wouldn't be Christmas without somebody making an ass out of themselves. This year it was you. Next year it might be me. Are you doing this again next year? No, not if you had a gun to my head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Happy Christmas. Oh, happy Christmas to you. And thanks for a lovely day. See ya, see ya. Bye, Junior. Right, you. Mummy? Yes, chicken. Did Santy say that Tommy is my daddy? Of course he didn't. You have the strangest dreams. Come on, let's go. And brush your teeth. <laughs> I will be checking. <laughs> What time do you call this? Huh? Disturbing my peace. <laughs> oh, mine was good. Yeah. I had two different men come on to me and I haven't even left the house. <laughs> Are you jealous? You big liar. A spaceman came travelling. I mean, come on, defend that. Good Christmas fair. A solid message. He says light years of time. That's not how a light year works. OK, then he gets D minus for science, but you have to admit, a cracking chorus. I flit, I float, I fleet, he fleet, I fly. <laughs> Grab a few beers or something. The girls waiting behind Peggy's for us. I'm already a step ahead of you, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Dennis is a menace, with his anyone for tennis, and beseeching me to stay and keep the score. And Maud says, oh, Lord, I'm so terribly bored. I really can't stand it anymore. But I'm going out to dinner with a really gorgeous singer <laughs> to a lovely little spot down by the quay. Her name is Patricia. But she calls herself Delicia. <laughs> and the reason isn't very hard to see. She says God called her a sinner just to keep those fat men thinner as they tumble down in heaps before her feet. They hang around in groups, like solitary troops. And often you can see them queue right down the street. You see, Patricia, or Delisha, is not only a singer, she also removes all her clothing. Because Patricia! <laughs> wait, 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 listen, Bill Kilnis, everybody listen. Is the best ripper in Listen! Well, there'll be no silent night tonight on RTE2 when the prince of an African nation faces a challenge to his throne. Chadwick Boseman gives the performance of his life in the Marvel action adventure Black Panther. That's at 10 o'clock over on 2. But here on RTE1, we all know Agnes is the queen of Fingless, but tonight she proves it by giving her own speech. She'll be addressing her public in Mrs. Brown's voice at 9.45. Next tonight, Christmas is all about family for the young offenders. And for the Collinses, stay tuned for a look at one of their family traditions. How are you, Harmony? Look where I am, huh? We're all thinking of you, love. You and Corky and the housemates. So long, farewell, a Vita and good night. I hate to go and leave this pretty sight. So long, farewell, off we to say adieu. Adieu, adieu. To you and you and you. Happy Christmas, Harmony. 
Messi på den. 